Hi, my name's Rachel Duckhouse and I'm an artist based in Glasgow. Drawing is absolutely integral to my practice and to my process and my development and it's I've come to realize over the years that it's uh, everything I do is drawing no matter what the medium is drawing is a way of thinking for me and a way of investigating and looking at things and asking questions so everything that I, I do is drawing. Um, this is a drawing from a series that I made about 10 years ago now um, and this is the kind of work I've always made <laughs> even since I was I was very small I've always wanted and been compelled to to make patterns and make rhythms and make repeating marks. Uh, so this work here is kind of a series I made. It's all about networks of marks that kind of grow and hold their own weight and float in space. And I'm really interested in layering systems of, of marks and networks of marks and creating a depth with them. And so I've always made work like this. Uh, but then something happened where it became more than just about intuition and, and things coming from inside of my mind kind of intuitively. And that happened in 2012, where for the very first time I applied to do an artist residency. And this artist residency really changed everything for me. Um, I applied to do a project in Calgary in Canada and they were looking for artists to make new work about the water in their city and the way it flows through the city. And this was really exciting for me because it was the first time I'd ever considered making work about something kind of outside of myself. So it wasn't just about intuitive mark making, but it was actually about something that existed in the world. So I took my sketchbook with me and my sketchbook just became full, filled with research about water. And I soon discovered that, of course, the connection between my work and water is patterns and flows and rhythms. Uh, I met with loads of really amazing experts who make their job is to, to, to think about water within the city and how it flows, whether that's flood protection, uh, water treatment, sewage treatment, everything is about how you manage the flow of water through the city. And as we talked, I started to draw and I started to think about that, what they were saying and how they were describing the flow of water. And I was starting to draw these lines and repeating marks. And before I knew it, we were creating a visual language that connected their research into water and the research that I was interested in, which was these, these rhythms and these flows. And over time, these sketchbooks became filled with ways of communicating and talking and asking questions, but in a visual way. And by the end of the, my time there, I was making these huge maps, which was all about the flow of water through the city um, and about flooding and about water management. And it really did change everything. And this idea of using research to draw with and to use research and talking to people and finding ways to, to draw through exploring different things in the world is really what I've been doing ever since. That's a little detail of that big drawing there. And so that's what I've been doing ever since. I've been really, really lucky that I've been meeting people and getting these opportunities to work with all sorts of specialists um, in all sorts of fields who are also fascinated by the patterns all around us and in, even inside us. So this was, um, this was a project I did in the University of Glasgow where I worked with a, a biominerals expert who was looking at the patterns within oyster shells and mother of pearl and all the mysteries surrounding the way these shells grow at a nano level. What's the architecture and can we imagine how they grow? And there's still so many questions um, in this, their scientific research. And of course, it's questions and investigations and exploring that I'm really interested in. And one of the things they were working at, at the time, which was really amazing, was how... Um, how stem cells within the human body respond to surface pattern. And it turns out that if you put human stem cell on a particular kind of surface with a particular kind of pattern, then it will stimulate to grow bone. And that was something, one of the mysteries around pattern and the human body that I was really fascinated to draw with these researchers at the university. And it was never about 
explaining or visualizing or representing anything they were doing. It was absolutely about exploring and asking questions and thinking about what this stuff might look like if I was to draw it out and what questions it raises. So while they were working with data and maths and modeling and numbers, nothing of which I'm really interested in, it doesn't spark my imagination at all. It's when they start to have conversations with me that the drawings start happening because I start imagining things and I start drawing things out in my own way. And then they can respond to my drawings and see their research in a, in a completely different way. So as you can see, it's all about mark making. It's all about rhythms and flows and measurements. And having said that, sometimes I don't know what it's about at all. <laughs> it's just stuff that, that comes out into the sketchbooks and sparks more, um, more, more questions. And it's not just about drawing in sketchbooks and about pen and paper, it's also about different ways of making marks. So I'm also really, really fascinated and interested in the processes of printmaking. And I'm really lucky because I've got, um, just near my studio, I've got Glasgow Print Studio, which is an amazing facility with lots of different kinds of printmaking techniques. And one of those is uh, lino relief printing. And lino is beautiful because you can make these beautiful clear marks, but then you can manipulate your shapes into all sorts of different uh, positions uh, quite quickly. And this was a piece of work I was doing about how you can generate random, um, random patterns. And so this kind of printmaking using repeat and flipping and turning, rotating shapes was really great to kind of think that through. And then you've got screen printing, which I consider to be a different kind of drawing. It's very immediate. You can print and print and print very quickly and get different patterns. This was me um, in thinking about and, and playing around with moray patterns, which is when you get two different grids of patterns and you print them slightly different angles. Um, so again, this is a kind of drawing for me, but using printmaking is just a different way of, of producing those marks and working through a process. And etching, etching is a beautiful, very traditional process of mark making, but you're using marks by etching them with acid into a, a metal plate. And this was a project I was doing about some architecture in Glasgow. But if I give you a little close up here, you can see that as I'm making the marks, these the lines, the, the ruled lines, I'm also picking up lots of little accidental marks along the way. And etching is a really beautiful process for revealing all these accidental noisy marks. And it's just, it's a different kind of texture. It's a different kind of surface that you're getting. But it, to me, it's all drawing. Um, and finally, I just wanted to show you this because this is a commission I did a few years ago now. And this is another thing I would consider to be a drawing. These are entrance gates for Edinburgh printmakers, which has just opened its beautiful new building. Um, and you can see um, <laughs> they're really massive. This was the biggest scale thing I've done. And it's made out of uh, galvanized steel. But to me, this is an extension of drawing because it all started in the sketchbook and it all started with research. And they were looking for a design that looked at the, the history of the building. And originally it was a rubber factory. So it, I did some research into the archives and I found these big, these pictures of these big rollers that would roll the rubber into rubber sheets. And of course those rollers are now what the, the print studio is using on a much smaller scale for its printmaking processes. So I made that connection between those two rolling movements and developed the design from there. And you can see that they started as drawings in a sketchbook and they finished up as drawings in 3D. Um, in uh, at the entrance gate to that building. So I hope that explains a little bit about how I feel about drawing and how drawing is pretty much the basis of everything I do. So when, just before lockdown happened, I was working on uh, an exhibition of prints that was going to be happening in the summer. And this exhibition was based on a residency I'd done last summer in the Outer Hebrides. And this was an extraordinary project where I went for a walk in the landscape of the Outer Hebrides and I was looking at architecture in the landscape in particular. 
and um, I had an incredible time meeting crofters and looking at the interventions in the landscape, such as sheep banks, which are like sheep pens to manage sheep, and also um, these amazing stepping stones of putting the rocks across the river so that the, the sheep could uh, get across. And this was something that they've been doing for generations and generations. Anyway, I was working on getting these prints together. And these prints were based, of course, again, on sketchbook drawings that I'd been doing while I was out there. And these sketchbook drawings were all about thinking about these stepping stones lying across the water. And that's a, a piece of tidal water. So the tide is coming up and down and in and out all the time. And the rocks are being covered and uncovered all the time. And there's wind whipping across and light whipping across and there's so much energy. And it's all about the kind of this imagined patterning and beautiful energy flows that were happening across the landscape. And you can see just the sketchbook was just full of these initial ideas that I'd made while I was out there. And then I was in Glasgow Print Studio, working away on some small plates, which I did manage to, to print. These are copper plates here that I made my marks onto there. And in March, I had just been beginning to make some really big, big works, which were for this big exhibition. And I was getting really excited about them and my head was all in these big prints. And then of course, lockdown happened and everything had to stop. So the exhibition was postponed the Glasgow Print Studio was shut and suddenly everything, <laughs> everything changed and we all remember how that felt. Um, so I, like everybody, well, like many people, um, started to work from home and I was so incredibly grateful to have drawing to fall back on, not only because I knew that I could continue my work, um, but also because it gave me um, kind of a, re a refuge uh, it gave me something to really, really focus on when there was a lot of anxiety in the air. And I, like so many people, were feeling extremely anxious. I was very worried about my family, very worried about my parents down in England and um, just feeling extremely anxious and, and not really knowing what was going to be happening and listening to the news all the time. But um, one, thing I did, one thing I decided that I had to do was just make some really complicated drawings <laughs> because I knew that that would, uh, that would kind of save me, keep my mind really focused. Um, it was kind of very meditative when you get into that stage of making these lines upon lines upon lines, you know, just drawing for days and days and days um, on end. Um, so that was a really meditative thing to do, but it also, because I was making these drawings, it was also very active, focused, thoughtful, and considered um, time to just really think through about making, making some really, some work that really excited me and really, really focused my attention. So I was really, really grateful for that time. And it did change the work. So of course now I was, I was working on a really small scale, but how amazing is drawing? Because all you need is a, pen and a piece of paper. I, I didn't need anything else. I just needed a pen, a piece of paper and a quiet, and a quiet room. And that's, that's what I had. So I can't tell you how grateful I've been for that over these last few months. Um, and the work changed, you know, as I started to think a lot more about um, that place that I'd been in, you know, and, and how, how big and remote and far away it was and how big that landscape was compared to this, this room that I was suddenly confined to. Um, so I went back to the drawings which had originally been preparatory drawings for these big prints and suddenly they became these more intimate scale, smaller, smaller scale drawings. And you can see this is, this is one of them here. And this was, these shapes that you can see here are the sheep fang, one of the sheep fangs that I came across um, on, my, on my walk through the Outer Hebrides. Here is another one, this amazing structure here. This was one of the first ones I found in Vatase, which is one of the, the southernmost islands in the Outer Hebrides. I didn't really understand what this whole crazy thing was at first, but I found out later that it was a, it was a sheep fang for, for crofters to manage their sheep in. Don't know how old it is, but it's just an image that stayed in my mind all these months later. And this is the drawing that I made when I was thinking about that, 
those shapes and that, that landscape, thinking about lots of things to do with distance, connection, disconnection, traveling through time in your mind, but also um, through the landscape as you're walking further away from something and getting closer to it. And rising sea levels in that area is also something that's been on my mind a lot. And um, it's really difficult to explain because the drawings just came out um, in quite a, an intuitive way, but that was one of them there. And then thinking again, I just kept coming back to this image of these sheep and the set stepping stones um, and that water rising and falling in that beautiful landscape. And this is one of the, this is, this, this is one of the bigger drawings that are made. And as you can see, this is the size of my living room table. This is as big as I could go <laughs> with the space that I had. But considering um, the, the, the intensity of the drawings, it, was, it, it took me long enough to do this one, but you can see this is kind of how I was working. You can see the sketchbook there. Uh, testing the ideas out and then working onto the bigger scale. And this is uh, the final drawing here. So this is the stepping stones kind of being covered and uncovered and the seas rising and falling over them and thinking about time, distance and all those things that kind of intensified in my mind over the, over the period of lockdown. So thank you for this drawing for, for keeping me going during that time. And that's kind of what I've just finished working on in the exhibitions. Uh, in North Uist right now, which is which is pretty wonderful. I am. Um, this is this is hard because um, I very much still feel like I'm learning all the time, and I could probably learn quite a lot from a young artist right now. <laughs> um, so I suppose that's my advice: is just keep learning, keep your eyes open, keep open. Like you don't know, you don't know what's going to affect you. And it might be the obvious stuff like artists whose work you admire, or it might not even it could be any any kind of any kind of thing out there that whether it's it's film or books or internet or music or buildings or food or she anything. Comes. It could absolutely be anything. And I would just say just always always keep open to what's what's around you. Um, and uh, the, other, the other thing I would, I, I would have advised myself when I was a lot younger was not just to, just to trust, just to trust that it will, it, will, it will all work out in the end because I, I panicked quite a lot because for a long time and still now, to be honest, don't always know what I'm doing. And that's not such a bad thing. Um, just keep going and keep working. Like uh, I would look up the words of uh, Sister Carita Kent who printed this amazing poster of rules uh, for artists. And one of them is the only rule is work. So just, just keep working and keep trusting that you're, you're in it for a very, very long time and things will go up and things will go down and you will be, you will be rejected <laughs> and you won't always get things right. Um, but I would say just, um, just, just know that it's all part of the process because it is a process. And it is one big experiment. And if you keep that in mind, you can't fail. And that's, let's keep going. <laughs>